I've got a question for you. No, for real, I I've got a question for you. Who do you think is the most famous person on earth? I bet if we had all of you shout out your answers right now, they would be all over the place. Some of you thought of the names of musicians, some of you thought of athletes, maybe some YouTubers or actors or hosts of your favorite shows. You see, when it comes to something like fame, we all have different ideas of who's in first place because each of us has different ideas of what's important. <laughs> what's important to me is catching multiple Swedish fish in my mouth. If you're not into sports, an NBA athlete isn't going to be a big deal to you. If you don't know much about fashion, you definitely don't know who the best designers are. If you don't watch superhero movies, you don't care about the guy who plays Iron Man. All of these things may be popular, but they just aren't popular with you. Because of that, they don't have a lot of influence over your life. What do I mean by that? Influence is the ability to have an effect on someone else. It's the ability to affect someone else's behavior, thoughts, or choices. And while we may not all agree on what's popular in our world or culture, I think we can all agree on this. Popular people have influence. They have people's attention. What they say and what they do matters to the people around them, and their popularity gives them the ability to lead or influence other people, to change things about themselves for better or for worse. I grew up in a time when boy bands were the thing. People, I mean the thing. They were the coolest people. They looked awesome. All of the people really just wanted to be their friends. They wanted to get close to them. They loved boy bands, and so did I. I wanted to be like them so much that I even changed the way that I looked in order to kind of look like them. I mean, people, listen, I may have bleached my hair and I looked a little bit like this. I know, I know, I know. For some people, bleach blonde hair is awesome. For others, it is not great, AKA me. But here's the funny thing about influence. A lot of us may wonder if we have it. We think the ability to influence another person is something that only comes with fame or popularity. Two things most middle schoolers and even adults don't always have. Maybe you wonder how much influence you truly have because you aren't quite sure what you have to offer. You don't have it all figured out, so you don't really know how you can lead or influence others. Even if you do have influence, what are you supposed to do with it? What direction are you supposed to be pointing other people? As a middle schooler, how do you use whatever influence you may have? Maybe you see that you have influence, but you struggle with the fear of failure. You're afraid to actually take steps to do it because you don't wanna mess up, you don't wanna get rejected, and you don't wanna make the wrong move. Maybe the pressure of influence is just too much for you. You see other people around you who have a lot of influence or are stepping up to lead, and honestly, it just looks like a lot of work. Their influence comes with so much pressure and attention that you don't want to sign up for that. And then there are those of you who haven't really put a lot of thought into this whole influence thing. Sure, you see influencers on YouTube and Instagram, but it's never really occurred to you that you have the power to influence or lead others to. Here's the point. We tend to think of influence as this big, unattainable thing. It's something that we can't seem to reach ourselves. We're quick to recognize the influence that famous or popular or important people seem to have, but somehow we end up missing the potential we have to influence others. Wondering if we have the power to influence those around us isn't a new thing. In fact, people have been wondering about their potential to lead and influence others for a really long time. Let me show you what I mean. I wanna look at an account from the Bible written by a guy named John. We're going to read about a time when Jesus was leading, serving, and living here on earth. During his ministry, Jesus had a ton of influence on the people around him. Of course, there was no social media or internet at the time to measure his fame or popularity, but we do have the Gospels, the four accounts written about Jesus' life on earth in the Bible. These accounts give us plenty of insight into how many people saw and followed Jesus while he was on earth. And Jesus didn't just have influence during his life. 2,000 years after his death, people are still talking about him and following him. That's a lot of influence. The particular account we're going to look at took place in the midst of one of Jesus' most influential moments. This was a moment where Jesus was talking to literally thousands of people who'd come to hear what he alone had to say. He'd been teaching and doing a lot of miracles up to this point, and word had spread about him. His influence was growing, and now he had massive crowds following him around because they couldn't wait to see what he would do next. When the story picks up, Jesus was focused on one particular thing, feeding the people. 
And while I can certainly appreciate a guy who's thinking about food, I can't imagine what it would be like to figure out how to feed thousands of people with nothing in front of you to start with. So let's see what happened. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Tell everyone to sit down, Jesus said. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes. The men alone numbered about 5,000. Okay, so let's pause here for a second. John, the guy who wrote all this down, says that there were about 5,000 men there. That's just one part of the group of people. Imagine how much bigger that number would have been if you would have actually counted the women and children. In the crowd, there was a young boy who had packed dinner. The only problem? This kid only packed a few loaves of bread and some fish. If you can't visualize it, let me help you. You see? This is what he had. He had five loaves, obviously these might be donut holes, and he had two fish. And you know, I could have chosen bass, I could have chosen trout, you know, tuna, anything, but I chose the greatest fish alive, the Swedish one. He even talks with an accent. He didn't come prepared to feed thousands. He just came with what little he had for himself. Five loaves and two fish. Here's what happened. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and distributed them to the people. Afterward, he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. As much as they wanted? After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So they picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. So the disciples took the young boy's food, five loaves of bread, and two fish, and gave it to Jesus. Jesus prayed over it and started handing it out. Now, if I were this kid, I'd probably be getting a little nervous. Not only did Jesus take his dinner, but he also expected it to be enough for every single person in the crowd to eat. That's like me expecting these candy fish and donut holes to feed all of you. At first glance, this kid didn't seem to have enough to offer, enough to give, enough to do anything worthwhile for these people. He had just had his dinner. That was it. But still, this kid let Jesus use what he had. And what happened? Jesus kept passing and passing and passing out enough food to feed every single person until they were full. By the time everyone had finished eating, there were still 12 baskets of leftovers. Pretty cool, right? There are so many amazing things about the story, but I want to zoom in on just one part. Jesus could have fed this huge crowd of hungry people any way he wanted to. He could have made it rain bread from heaven. He could have called the fish to flop out of the sea, but he didn't. Instead, he used a boy's dinner. The boy had just packed himself something to eat, two fish and five loaves of bread, and that's what Jesus chose to feed him. Jesus saw that the boy had something to give, and Jesus chose to use it to make an impact. By doing that, Jesus made this boy's dinner into so much more. I mean, take a look at how this passage ends. When the people saw him do this miraculous sign, they exclaimed, surely he is the prophet we have been expecting. The people saw what Jesus did with what this kid brought. And because of it, they started to believe in him. Could Jesus have done this all without this boy and his bread and his fish? Of course. But he chose to use someone who is willing to give what they had, no matter how little it may have seemed. The kid wasn't super important or popular. Nobody there probably even really knew his name. He hadn't even intended to be influential. He just packed food for himself. But because he had just brought what he had, Jesus allowed him to be a part of influencing thousands of people to believe. And that's pretty cool. If Jesus could use a young boy with his dinner to make a massive impact over 2,000 years ago, he can use you just as you are. He can use whatever you have to give right now to make an incredible impact today. Because just like this boy, Jesus can use whatever you have to do big things. This happened to me recently. I sent a text to one of my friends, and I was just letting them know that I cared about them and that I was thinking about them and I was praying for them. Little did I know, that that person was having a terrible day. It was just a simple text. It was just a simple thought in my head. I wanted them to know that I cared about them and that I was thinking about them. And I didn't really realize what kind of impact that was having on their day. They told me not too long ago that that thing, that text, that simple act of kindness is what helped them move forward. 
Jesus used that small text in a big way for my friend. You don't have to be popular or well-known or famous to have influence. You don't need to have the most followers on Instagram or the most views on TikTok to get it. You don't have to sit with the most people at lunch or be the one everybody wants to sit next to on the bus. You simply have to be willing to let Jesus use what you have. You have to be willing to give whatever you've got for the good of others. If you come to the table with that, I promise Jesus will use your influence to impact the people around you in the best ways. Jesus can use whatever you have to do big things. And today, I want to help you start seeing that. For some of you, maybe the best thing you can do today is begin to recognize the influence you have. Maybe it's influence with your family, your teammates, in your friend group, your small group, or even your entire class at school. Maybe it's just one close friend, one kid in your small group, one younger sibling, or one student on the bus you talk to every morning. Either way, it's influence. And you have it. It doesn't have to be thousands of people. It doesn't have to be even dozens. If there's one person in your life who you can lead towards something positive, that's influence. If you're not sure, ask someone you trust to help you see it. A close friend, a parent, your small group leader, ask them where they see you might have more potential to influence others than you realize. Then, be willing to do something with what you have to offer. Maybe you have time to give to your younger siblings, a seat at the lunch table to offer to a friend, or a weekend to spend away with your small group. Maybe you have a kind word to share with a teammate, a sense of humor to make your mom laugh, or an invitation to church for someone who needs it. Think about it. We all have something to offer to others. And when we're willing to use what we have, that's influence. If you're not sure what you have to give, again, ask someone who's close to you for an idea because that's a great place to start. Because whether you realize it or not, you've definitely got something. Jesus can use whatever you have to do big things. As we read today in our scripture, just like Jesus turned a single meal into feeding thousands of people, he can just use whatever you have to make a difference. And as you head out, think about this question. What's one area I have influence in?